All right, so we got an original double dragon PCB here. Normally the two halves, there's two halves here which are combined through with some ribbon cables. Normally there's standoffs here in each corner that stand the two halves off so they're not sandwiched together and touching each other for shorting out purposes. But uh, this is how I received this board. So it didn't have any of the standoffs. So I had to put this bag of zip ties here to keep them apart from each other. So that being aside, uh, this was totally completely dead. Uh, I had <laughs> no activity, plug it in, turn it on, it does nothing. Well, poking around, I found out that the actual 5-volt rail and ground were shorted together. Of course, that's not good, and that's not going to produce any results, and it was actually turning off the power supply. So it turns out on the other, on the other side of the board here, not this half, but the other half, uh, I can't really turn it around right now, but there was a capacitor that had been smashed. And it's this guy right there. It's basically just falling apart. But it's actually shorted. So if I, if you look at the top of it here, the top was smashed and the two halves of the capacitor were sandwiched together and folded over and shorting the power in the ground rail. This is a capacitor, a little filter cap, like all these little filter caps here on the, for all the chips and stuff. They're um, just little filter caps for the 5 volt rail. But basically this was shorted and you can see here, I'll zoom in if I'm able to. Uh, we'll do it this way. And I got the meter here, which you can hear if I touch the leads. Beep. So if I actually, uh, let's do it this way. Let's put it on a piece of insulation just so we know it's not the test bench, because the test bench is made of metal. So anyway, so if we go to each leg, there's one, here's the other, shorted. So this capacitor was killing the 5-volt rail. After removing it, the board now boots up. So it was a quick and easy fix on that aspect of the of the whole project here. But it's not fixed quite yet because I have a ROM error and I have bad caps on the audio section. So if we turn this on now, now it powers up. Is that all the way? That's all the way, all right. So if we turn this on, you'll see it boots up now. But I had that ROM one error. Let's see if I can, I don't think there's a reset button, so let's just turn it off. One, two, three, back on. Yeah, ROM 1 error. I don't know which one of these is ROM 1, but it's obviously one of these four. Um, it doesn't say, uh, it says 21A1, 21 uh, I'm sorry, 21A1, 21J2, 21A4, 21A3, and 21A4. So I don't know if it's this one or really which one it is, I'll figure it out. But that shouldn't be a problem. The main problem is, is that the audio, you can hear, if I wiggle this capacitor, yeah, so, I don't know if it's bad caps or if it's that bad capacitor by itself or if it's a bad solder pad, but audio issues are obviously related to that capacitor or its pads or somewhere in that ex that section there, uh, which obviously is the whole audio section because there's the amplifier and whatnot. Um, but anyway, so yeah, it's making progress. That shorted capacitor was keeping it from even powering on, so now I at least have power. I've got to figure out now uh, which one of these ROMs it is that's, ca that's, that's causing the ROM 1 error, and I've got to fix the audio problem. So... Stand by, I'll do some more troubleshooting and we'll see how it turns out. All right, real quick though, before I really kind of go any further, I wanted to show where that capacitor was. It's actually C30 right here. And you can see it's different from all the rest of it because I already replaced it. I have stole that off of a, a Mortal Kombat 1 board. It's missing a U49 CMOS chip. That's just how I bought it. I bought this for spares. And that's why I ended up using it for is just a spare capacitor. Just a filter cap right there. Stole it off of, uh, you know, just the same type of thing. It's a filter cap for the various RAM chips and buffers and things like that. So I stole one and put it in there. So that should fix that issue. But that's where it was. C30, it was, somehow it got smashed. And then the two halves of the capacitor were touching there. You saw previously. So, yep, I'm going to continue on here. Try and get that ROM issue resolved. And figure out what's going on with the audio section and we'll see if I can't get it up to 100%. One moment. 
Well, I didn't know exactly which ROM was ROM 1, so I started pulling out all the chips and reseeding them. And when I got to this one, which I guess logically, no pun intended, could be ROM 1, ROM 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, when I pulled out, I guess we'll call it ROM 1, look at that, broken leg. The other part of the leg is not in the socket, so who knows where it is. So I'm going to solder on a uh, another leg here, a new leg from another component, a spare component, a capacitor or something. And then we'll boot it up and see if that fixes the ROM error. And then if it does, we'll proceed on with the sound section and try and get this thing 100%. So stand by. So I got a new leg successfully installed on there. I stole it from the from a capacitor there. It only needed to be very short, you know, not too long. And I had to scrape away the old oxidation off the old pin that's going into the chip to get and add some flux to get the solder to stick to the leg or what was left of it. Soldered a new leg on there and it's ready to go. So let's get it installed and see what happens. Okay, let's fire it up. Hopefully the ROM error is gone. Oh, nope, ROM 1 error. Well, that's a bummer. So I guess what we'll do is we will take the ROM out and put it in the chip reader and compare it to the file in MAME and let's see if the ROM is actually bad. All right, so we got the small little test laptop out I have for doing this type of work. We got the chip reader and as you can see when you go to the when you go to read, we'll read the device. I have the chip set up 27256 which is what these are. Um, yeah, I disregard the TMM and just do 27256. Uh, but this is actually ROM number two and I'll show you why in a minute. But if I go to read reads the device, and then it fills the buffer with the information on the chip. Okay, so now all I need to do is take chip number two out and put chip number one in, and we'll close it off, and I'll go to read, and the buffer is empty. So this chip is either bad or empty. It is completely 100% empty. If I go up here to blank, do a blink check. It'll read it and it says blink. We go back to message log actually. Chip is blank. So <laughs> there's no data on the thing. I don't know how it's running at all, <clears throat> at all with no data coming from ROM 1. But according to the chip reader here, this is completely dead. <clears throat> Nothing on it. If I go back to the buffer, this is the information on that chip, which is all Fs, which is nothing. I put ROM number 2 back in. Close it off and go to read. There we go, it's got data on it. So there's something wrong, either the ROM is bad or it dumped its data. You know, you can see all of the code here. So yeah, I guess I'll download, uh, I'll download this information that's supposed to be on here and I'll try and burn it again. So we'll see what happens, one moment. All right, success. I was able to erase the ROM and reburn it with the correct information. So now if you see here, if I open up the file, which is this one here, into the buffer, hit OK. Now if I go up here and hit verify, it'll read the chip and the data is verified. If we go back to message log, elapse time and device is verified. So that's it. So now Let's stick it out of the burner. Let's put it back in the board. And let's see what it's doing. Here we go. Fingers crossed. Oh. Well, sounds working. I haven't done anything. So you see it's still kind of messed up. But now I have a ROM 2 error. This is getting more intriguing by the second. Let's turn this back on. Now I have ROM 2 error. ROM 1's fixed now. <laughs> so that erasing and reburning the info on ROM 1 fixed that problem. Now I have a ROM 2 problem. Maybe it's just not seated properly. Let me kind of wiggle it around here. Reseat it. I'll see what that does, if anything. Nope, now I have ROM 2 error. This is just, huh, 
Well, here we go again. Let's see what I can find out for this. All right, success. I got it working. And what I did was, is the ROM actually had some tarnished legs. For the most part, they all looked okay, so I never really gave it a second thought. But looking at them more closely, there were two or three legs that were kind of oxidized. So I cleaned the oxidation off of them, put them back in, or put it back in, and it fixed it. So check it out. Turn it back on here. It may go away too soon. Oh, look at that. Yep. All okay. Perfect. So we had a, um, a bad ROM that needed erased and reburned, and we had a ROM with bad uh, legs, and I also went ahead and cleaned the legs on the other three. So, yep, all of our ROM issues are resolved. Actually, I need to put the ROM label back on here. And I'll push it down. I'll push it down later because of this kind of fiasco here. I'll push it down later. But, yep, on the, onto the audio section. I'll try and get that working, and then we'll have 100% operational board. You can see here, again, if I just move the, the capacitor here. So yeah, let's get, uh, let's get that fixed and hopefully the board will be 100%. Stand by. Well, mission accomplished on the capacitor replacement. I ended up changing all the ones on the top of the board here. You know, the ones on the edge and there's one in the middle and then the rest of them are all over here in the audio section. Uh, but I got all of them changed out. I did not have any axial caps. I went ahead and put the radial caps in there in place. That It does the same function. It's totally okay to put radials in place of axials. Of course, the footprint stands up taller, but that's not going to be a big deal. Uh, but all the caps have been changed in the audio, the one in the middle and the two on the edge. I did not change the ones on the other side of the board because they seemed okay. Uh, these two here were bent over flat and kind of smashed a bit. So all the caps have been changed. Uh, that should be the last thing to test, so let's get it fired up, see what happens. What well, we forgot to mention here real quick is um, these are all the old capacitors here from the audio section that was all, they're all over here and this one in the middle and these two. So here's all the old caps. Here's the cap that was shorted that was keeping the board from booting. It was shortening the 5 volt rail to ground. So the bad audio caps combined with the bad filter cap combined with the corrupted data on ROM 1 and the bad connection um, on the socket for ROM 2. Actually, not the socket. It was the pins that were tarnished. Um, all that being dealt with and corrected, it should be 100%. So let's plug it in and see what happens. All right. Moment of truth. What's going to happen? Oh, everything was okay. And we have audio. Moving this capacitor around does not affect the audio anymore, so yeah. So our audio is good. Let's see if we can begin a game here. Two players? Why not? Two is good. Were you scared? Come on. Oh, as soon as I stop, you run up, huh? Back battery. All right, so it looks like we are good to go. So there you have it. Bad caps, a shorted filter cap. Corrupted data on the ROM and a bad connection on ROM 2. So, yep, I say this is a successful repair. I need to get the standoffs for both halves here. But for now, yeah, it's back to working. So from fully dead to fully working. So thanks for following along, and uh, I guess we'll see you next time.